What if I told you that the honey you're eating might not be from bees and soon you're not even gonna be able to tell the difference. America has a honey problem. A lot of what's on the shelves is adulterated and imported with little oversight. In a 2018 study, it showed that nearly 50% of the honey that was tested was either fake or altered. Many brands add sugar syrups or import mislabeled products in order to cut costs. And why, you may ask? Well, that's simple. Profit margins. <laughs> Real honey is expensive and cutting it is practically a gold mine and can instantly increase the amount of revenue a producer or a country can generate around the product. Well, that problem opened up a door to something new and maybe even more dangerous. Lab grown honey. An Israeli biotech company, BIO, just got the green light to sell lab-grown honey in America. No bees, no hives, just fermentation tanks and synthetic processing. They claim it's identical to real honey, but identical according to who? This is the cleanest honey in the world. It looks like honey, it smells like honey, and it tastes like honey. But this one does not come from a bee. It comes from the lab. How? By building a stomach of a bee in our labs. We are able to produce honey in a matter of hours instead of seasons. They also claim that bee-free honey would help save the bees, when in fact it would do the complete opposite. Right now, because of America's problem with adulterated honey, commercial beekeepers are just barely scraping by. And when I say commercial beekeeper, I'm talking about the beekeepers that pollinate the food that we grow here in America. So let me paint a picture for you on the importance of honey and honey prices for a commercial beekeeper. So imagine you're a commercial beekeeper in the United States managing anywhere from 500 to 40,000 hives. Your year is defined by seasons, nectar flows, and survival rates. But your income? That hinges heavily on one thing, honey. A healthy hive can produce anywhere from 60 to 100 pounds of honey per year. That rate used to be a little bit higher, but in recent years, it has been starting to decline. Wholesale honey prices vary, but in recent years, they've hovered around a buck 65 to $3 a pound, sometimes lower if imported honey floods the market. So that means a beekeeper can make anywhere between 100 to $300 per hive in honey revenue. But a beekeeper's expenses are very steep and rising. They've got feed, sugar syrup during nectar shortages or a dearth. They also have pollen sub that they also have to put on too. You have medications for mites and diseases. You have labor and seasonal workers, which I believe that H2A, which is the program that a lot of commercial beekeepers use to find help, to find labor for their operation, because believe it or not, a lot of Americans aren't really fond of working in 90 degree heat um, for 10 to 12 hours a day while also getting stung by little creatures flying around them. <laughs> but I believe last time I checked H2A minimum wages did go up recently. So the strain is just adding on to the commercial beekeeper. You also have fuel and transportation. You have equipment, all of the extractors, the frames, the boxes, the the forklifts that you need, any trucks that you need, any trailers, flat, like there's so much that goes into farming and that's what you're pretty much doing is farming. And then you have bee losses as well because that is inevitable. You're gonna have bee losses every single year that you're going to have to replace to keep everything running smoothly. All of this adds up to around $200 per hive in expenses. Now, I know that some beekeepers could possibly have their expenses be higher or maybe even lower. It just depends on your specific situation and what your management strategies are. Obviously, the lower you can get that number, the better, but right now, $200 per hive is pretty reasonable in a good year. 
I say a good year because we just saw the biggest colony die-off in history in America right now. Um, around 62% of the hives in America collapsed, so there's a lot of guys that are really struggling now because of that. But all this being said, I am just trying to paint a picture for you so you have a better understanding of what it is to be a beekeeper and how expensive it has gotten over the last 30 years. So next we have pollination income. It helps, but it's seasonal and it's also very risky. And pollination prices have not gone up in the last 20 years, meaning that it is not growing with inflation whatsoever. Many commercial beekeepers will rent out their hives for pollination for things like almonds in California, or you got blueberries all the way up the East Coast, and you got tree fruits too, all the apples, pears, peaches, cherries, stuff like that. You also have a lot of vegetables too, and you have a lot of seeds. There's a lot of things that need pollinated. But the reason I say it's risky is because it takes a huge toll on bee health because of the stress, the isolated nutritional source, you got pesticide exposure and other sprays that they're exposed to, and you also have transportation losses too. The most successful beekeepers that I have talked to usually say that you can't run your hives through pollination events year round, otherwise they won't make it till next year and they most certainly will not make you any honey. Thus, for most beekeepers, leaving their hives in a honey producing yard for a portion of the year is a necessity to the health and longevity of their hives. So all of that being said, if imported or lab grown honey floods the market and pushes prices below $2 a pound, which guys, we're already there. <laughs> Many small to mid-sized beekeepers won't survive because of their cost to operate now exceeds that $2 per pound for the honey that their hives can produce. So if none of the beekeepers can stay profitable and all go under because of dropping honey prices, then they can't afford to pollinate our country's food, thus not really saving the bees. <laughs> and to go into this even deeper, Beekeepers are known to be the stewards of our country's land in that if anything new comes in, say that be like a new pesticide, herbicide, anything like that, or any different developmental changes to the environment um, of tearing down natural habitats, beekeepers see it first. They're instantly affected. But if they are no longer here to keep things running smoothly, then who's gonna speak up when a new chemical or the development of natural habitat starts destroying our land? Okay, so I don't want to be all doom and gloom with you. I am honestly just trying to show you what is happening in America right now. So what do we have in terms of testing for adulterated and lab-grown honey? So honey imports are tested by labs like Intertect, which is a German company. You also have Eurofins, which is another German-based company, but they do have a lab in New Orleans. And then you also have QSI, which is the most prominent, Quality Services International. They have a California location, but they are also a German-based company. And some of the testing methods that they do use, the three main ones that they use, is called Nuclear Magnetic Resonance, which is a type of testing that analyzes the chemical fingerprint of honey and compares them to a database of authentic samples. You also have liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, test which tests honey by separating and identifying compounds using liquid chromatography and then analyzing their mass to charge ratios with a mass spectrometer, allowing for the detection of contaminants and adulterants and the determination of the honey's chemical composition. And the last way that we have for testing honey is a stable isotope ratio analysis, which tests honey for adulteration by comparing the ratios of different carbon isotopes in the sample, revealing if C4 sugars like corn syrup, which do have a different isotopic sig signature, have been added to the sample. But here's the issue. These methods detect syrups, foreign sugars, and origin by pollen. They test for fraud, not lab mimicry. But if BIO's product is bioidentical, 
it could slip through undetected labeled as honey when it's not from a hive whatsoever are we really prepared for that Real beekeepers are already squeezed by cheap imports and now they're going to face comp competition from labs. Bees pollinate a third of our food supply, so without the demand for their honey, who pays to protect them? Lab honey might save corporate profits, but it risks collapsing real ecosystems. So fake honey did just get approved and most people have absolutely no idea. So share to protect real honey, real bees, and real food. And don't forget, honey is just a product until you meet the beekeeper behind it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.